Okay, you guys, welcome to my home. If by any chance you haven't read chapters one and two, go right now and read them, okay? Uh, once you've read them, come on back and let's go over a few things because I want you to know this book, I want you to understand it, and we're going to get started right now and hope that everybody's on board and have at least read over chapters one and two. Okay, in chapter one we talk about the fact that all languages have grammatical structure, whether they're dialects or languages, and they're all valued. However, here in this class we're going to learn how to do standard English. We're going to learn how to use it correctly, how to be able to implement it, uh, how to be able to make it, uh, it needs to make a difference in how you write. And I want right from the get-go for you to embrace the fact that you need to write well. You need to know how to apply these principles. All right, we begin chapter two, uh, page 19, uh, and right away the authors are talking about two types of classes. You have form or structure. That's really what this chapter two is about. They want you to know that noun, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, they have different forms, and you can change those forms, and that will give you indicators on uh, what type of, uh, what part of speech it is. Uh, this is for example, nouns on page 20. Well, they, you can make them plural or possessive. You can change their forms. You see? They are form class. And that's how you know they're nouns. Um, one way in which you can indicate that they're nouns. By the way, on page 21 there's a definition of phrase. I love that. I want you to know that, okay? A phrase is a word or group of words that function as a unit. Okay? And in this book, that phrase actually could even be one word. Or it might be a couple of words. And they uh, use it differently. But know that that's what a phrase is. And towards the bottom of page 21, we discover that determiners are articles like a or an, you know, the, the book, or a book. Uh, you also have articles uh, that can, um, well, no, you have the determiners like very or much. Uh, those, by the way, are structure, and we're going to learn more about them towards the end of the chapter. They are structure class. They don't change forms. However, flip the page and we have verbs that are introduced to us. And of course you guys know that verbs change form. They can be past or present or future. By the way, if you do not understand verbs and those verb tenses and what a, a present tense is and what a perfect tense is, please look up a good YouTube video. Go over it, study it, make sure you understand it. And there's different ways to do those tenses and I expect you to know them. Then we move on to adjective and adverbs. And an adjective, of course, modifies or describes nouns, like the tall boy, or you have adverbs, the root part verb, of course, modify verbs, and uh, you can have something like, he ran quickly. Well, part of what you need to discover in this chapter is that adverbs and um, adjectives also have uh, forms that can change, like, for example, uh, you can put very in front of both an adjective and an adverb, and that will help you to identify, yes, actually that is uh, not a noun. Uh, or you can add an ly to an adjective and that makes it an, L, uh, an adverb. I want you guys to learn all these different words. Of course, there's always exceptions at the bottom of page 26. We see the exceptions. Uh, notice in that last paragraph, read it over, okay, because it says there are some uh, adverbs that have no form clues, like then, now, soon, here, there. I suggest you write those down on index cards. For some of you, index cards will become your best friends. Uh, you can just f have them out in front of your computer or on your desk when you're working on your homework and you can reference some of these exceptions or some of these rules or principles. Get comfortable with them. Uh, let's see, I want to also talk to you about preposition. Let me just quickly tell you that uh, in my 102 class I talk about a bridge and I reference this uh, for prepositions. I say you can go onto a bridge, you can go under a bridge, you can go over a bridge, you can go around a bridge, you can go before a bridge, behind a bridge. Uh, you have all these different prepositions. Those are prepositions before, behind, in, and to, around, after. Uh, by the way, I believe all of them are um, listed for you on page 278. Now I'd suggest you go through those lists and, and circle ones that don't apply to the bridge. There are a few, like for example, as or despite. You can't do, go despite a bridge. You can't go as a bridge. There are of course a few exceptions. Always those exceptions, right, in grammar. Wish there weren't, but there are. So get, get familiar with those exceptions. Maybe those exceptions could go on an index card as well. A way in which you could remember them. Why in the world do we even care about prepositions? Well, you see, if you really understand that prepositional phrase, it begins with a preposition, before, after, in, and to, beyond, all those prepositions. It ends with the object of the preposition. Go to the class, around the house, 
behind the garage. Okay, that object um, follows up the preposition. That structure, it doesn't change. It's always that way. You need to know that that's what I'll be looking for in prepositional phrases. However, if you move the prepositional phrase from the end of the sentence, where you usually find it, to the beginning of the sentence, you have to put a comma after that prepositional phrase. Look at the example on page 28. Towards so about two-thirds of the way down the page, you see the students rested after their long trip. The preposition fra prepositional phrase is at the end of the sentence. Move it to the beginning of the sentence and the next example beneath it, and it says after their long trip, comma, the students rested. You guys, if you begin a sentence with a preposition, look for where that object of the preposition, the phrase ends, and put a comma. That's what I want you to do. I want you to get to understand these rules and how it impacts your grammar. Because you know what? Not only are we going to be looking for that when you are writing for us papers, but also your employer is going to be looking for that. Impress them and, and know these rules and understand them. Now, please read the bottom of page 28 and just understand that adjectivals, okay? Adjectives, adjectivals, uh, they are a part of speech that acts like an adjective, but it actually might not have an adjective in it. That's the odd thing. Or adverbials, they act as an adverb, although they might not have an adverb in them. Now that's very strange, however, I'll be using that term over and over again. So read it over, understand it, bottom of page 28, very important. And lastly, we have just a reference to the structure class. What are structures? If not the form class, but the structure class, there are words that don't change. They're the same, like prepositions or conjunctions, but nan. You can't add an S to them, make them plural, do a past tense or future tense, or uh, uh, let's see, uh, conjunction. Oh, determiners, a or an, um, uh, qualifiers, very or much. Okay, you've got these these words that don't change. So there are some form class and there are some structure class. Know the difference. You guys, you've got a quiz to do. You also have some assignments to do. I suggest do the assignments first. Make sure you understand the material, then take the quiz. And very quickly, we'll be in the latter half of week one, moving on to chapter three and four. Thanks.